This video was sponsored by CutsClothing.com. It was 2016, and Josh McCown's daughter had Jersey Day at school. There was no question that she would be wearing his jersey, but which one? Her father was a Cleveland Brown, but that wasn't the only jersey in her closet. In fact, there were eight. Instead, the younger McCown and five of her friends each donned a different Josh jersey. A Browns, a Dolphins, a Raiders, a Lions, a Bucks, and a pair of Bears. The six jerseys didn't even represent every stop he had made in the NFL to that point, and they couldn't account for the three jerseys he would wear in the future. Josh McCown's career as an NFL quarterback spanned three different decades, and a walk-in closet's worth of NFL jerseys. The life of an NFL journeyman takes many twists and turns. There were ups and downs, a tragic ending to his career, and hope on the horizon in a different way. This is the story of Josh McCown, the NFL's ultimate journeyman. Josh McCown was born in Jacksonville, Texas, where he attended Jacksonville High School and excelled at football and basketball. After high school, he committed to nearby SMU and the local Texas product was off on his journey. However, through his first three seasons, he was struggling. Josh's dream of becoming an NFL quarterback was slipping away. He had thrown just 27 touchdowns and tossed an alarming 34 picks in 25 games as a Mustang. It was time for a change of scenery. Before his senior season, McCown transferred to pass happy Sam Houston State, where his college career was quickly realized. The blonde-haired signal caller put together a dominant campaign, tossing 32 touchdowns on his way to a 10-3 season in 2001. Suddenly, the 6'4 quarterback with 4.5 speed was on the NFL's radar. Yes, he could run. Within a year, McCown went from a college afterthought to the 81st overall pick in the 2002 NFL Draft, joining the embattled Arizona Cardinals. McCown wasn't an immediate starter in the desert, backing up Jake Plummer and Jeff Blake in his first two seasons, but got his chance at the end of the 2003 season and became responsible for one of the most painful moments in Minnesota Vikings history. On the last play of the game, McCown rolled to his right and found Nate Poole in the end zone for a 28-yard game-winning touchdown on fourth down. The score knocked the Vikings out of the playoffs and helped the Packers take their place. McCown and Poole were both invited to the Packers' first playoff game where Poole was offered a key to the city. The next year was supposed to be Josh McCown's coming out party. He was the unquestioned starter, was flush with weapons on the outside with second-year wide receiver Anquan Bolden and rookie phenom Larry Fitzgerald. But things didn't quite go according to plan. McCown put up, well, journeyman numbers. 11 touchdowns, 10 picks, and most importantly, just a 6-7 and seven record. Eventually, head coach Dennis Green stepped in and handed the reins over to veteran quarterback Sean King. Not that Sean King. And this is where things got pretty rough for McCown. The process repeated itself a year later when McCown was relegated to backup duty once again after the Cards acquired former Super Bowl MVP Kurt Warner. By the time Warner had led the Cardinals to their first Super Bowl four years later against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Josh McCown was watching at home, now playing for his fifth team. It was McCown's Panthers and starting quarterback Jake Del Home that had been trounced by his former team the NFC Divisional Round. Since leaving the desert, McCown had bounced around to the Detroit Lions, where he actually caught passes as a wide receiver, the Oakland Raiders, and a brief cup of coffee with the Miami Dolphins. It might have been a longer stay in Miami if not for a nearly gruesome accident. Josh and his brother Luke were cutting firewood when Luke, a fellow NFL quarterback, grazed Josh's right finger with a chainsaw, creating a wound that would require six stitches. On one hand, Josh was lucky he didn't lose a whole digit. But on the other hand, the injury set him back in a situation where he could have won the starting job in Miami. Instead, the Dolphins cut McCown in the preseason, signed Chad Pennington, and went to the playoffs as Pennington won the Comeback Player of the Year in 2008. McCown was relegated to two years as a backup in Carolina, and soon he was out of the NFL altogether. But his career was far from over. The seven-year NFL vet was destined for the upstart United Football League, where he was signed by the Hartford Colonials. 
But around the same time, the Chicago Bears also came calling, offering him a contract to rejoin the big leagues. McCown shockingly said no, opting to stay put in the UFL. And it actually might have been one of the best decisions of his career. It just didn't sit well with me, McCown said about the possibility of leaving Hartford before playing a game. The Colonials only went 3-5 and five in their short-lived run in 2010, but McCown actually learned more on a UFL field than he did on an NFL sideline. In 2011, McCown said that, I think I'm further along now than I would have been if I would have just sat on an NFL roster last year and been a backup because I played in eight games. I think you're only getting better when you're taking reps, so I really valued that. The move would pay off, just not immediately. After his time in the UFL, it looked like things might be over for McCown from an NFL standpoint, but he hadn't given up on the game. He was coaching his high school team, Marvin Ridge, to a North Carolina state championship. As soon as the high school season was done, Jay Cutler got hurt and the Bears put in a call to McCown. Despite his perceived lack of interest, Chicago had been eyeing the 33-year-old for a while. and He was a natural fit. Even before he got on the field, McCown was a welcome presence in the locker room. The veteran quarterback was making his transformation from player to coach on the field. There are so many different aspects to what he brings to this team, especially for me, Jay Cutler said about McCown. It's a grinded out league and you need some optimism and some positivity and he brings that. If I'm here, I want him here. That's how I feel about it. Wow, Jay Cutler sounding like a grown up? McCown was now the second stringer in 2013 and his number was called as Jay Cutler went down and the Bears attempted to win the NFC North. McCown's first action came in a tight game against Washington that became a 45 to 41 loss. A week later, McCown made his first start as a Chicago Bear. You know, a pretty easy assignment like Monday Night Football against the Green Bay Packers. McCown took down the Cheeseheads at Lambeau, something that Jay Cutler had failed to accomplish in four tries. A couple weeks later and starting another game and defeating the Ravens, McCown was on Monday Night Football once again, this time against the Cowboys. With the whole country watching, Josh McCown turned in the greatest performance by a quarterback in Bears history. I'm not exaggerating. In the 45-28 victory, Josh McCown threw for 348 yards, four touchdowns, and ran for a fifth. He was the NFC Offensive Player of the Week and the first Bears quarterback since Jack Concannon to account for five touchdowns in a single game. In just five starts, Josh McCown had thrown for 13 touchdowns and just one interception. After the victory against Dallas, the Bears were on the verge of winning the division. But rather than sticking to the red-hot McCown, Chicago went back to Jay Cutler. Cutler defeated the Browns, then lost two straights, including a division-deciding loss to the Packers in Week 17. McCown watched from the sideline, but many of his teammates and probably most of the fans would have preferred to have seen him on the field. Cutler held on to the starting role in 2014 while McCown became a free agent, earning a two-year, $10 million deal in Tampa Bay. Finally, he was signed as the unquestioned starter. However, things wouldn't be so rosy. Though the Buccaneers were doomed in 2014, as were the Browns in 2015 a year later, McCown spent the second half of his career toughing it out with franchises that could never seem to get it right at the quarterback position. Teams like the Browns and the Jets. Though his efforts may have been in vain, McCown did his best to mentor Johnny Manziel in Cleveland before guiding Sam Darnold through his rookie season in New York. But there was one more twist in this story. After announcing his retirement, McCown was signed to the Eagles before the 2019-2020 season, which would be his 18th in the league. It took two backups to get injured for McCown to find himself on the roster. But by the end of the season, Josh would find himself in a very unexpected place, on the field, during a playoff game. When Carson Wentz got injured during the Eagles wildcard game against the Seahawks, McCown became the oldest quarterback to make his postseason debut at age 40. He fought valiantly, completing 18 of 24 passes for 174 yards, rushing for 23, and leading three scoring drives. In the end, the Eagles came up short, losing 17-9. After the game, however, McCown later revealed he tore his hamstring off the bone in the second quarter, but knowing the Eagles were down to him, continued to gut it out. In an emotional display in the tunnel, McCown let it all out. 
the pain and sacrifice of a journeyman bared for the world to see. And though he might not have known it, that would be the end of his playing career. During the COVID-affected 2020 season, McCown stayed home and was paid by the Eagles as a practice squad player and later the Texans to do it, serving as an emergency quarterback for each team. He also kept coaching in high school where his two sons played. McCown even interviewed for the Texans head coaching vacancy while he was still on the roster. When all was said and done, Josh McCown's career had spanned 19 seasons, two professional leagues, a number of different roles, and 12 different NFL teams. Josh McCown was the NFL's ultimate journeyman. The weather is getting colder, but you know what's heating up? Cuts Clothing, Black Friday, and Cyber Monday sales. You've seen Cuts, high quality, form fitting, long lasting gear in a variety of colors and styles. And now you can get them for 30% off site wide with no code required. And even better, they are hooking you up with new styles and fits this winter. The capsule collection drop schedule is as follows 1114 Universal Fit, Crew Curves. 1116 Sherpa full zip and half zips. 1121 Heather Gray with three style options. 1123 Pigment Dye hoodies, that's the one I'm rocking. And finally, 1125 Pigment Dye sweatpants so you can lounge in comfort. Like I said, this is the biggest sale and merch drop ever from Cuts. So if you go to cutsclothing.com from the link below, you don't even need to enter a code and it's 30% off site wide. And remember, they will be dropping new capsules leading up to Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Give the gift of looking fresh or hey, treat yourself this year. You deserve it. Cutsclothing.com.